Hey guys, GameBorser6 here, we're back with another video. In this video, I'll be drawing another set of thumbnail images. Today, I'll be discussing my thoughts on what's going on within My Hero Academia as of episode 19, since when I'm recording this video, episode 20 hasn't come out yet, my enjoyment in creating quick sketches, and my thoughts on Hitachi Uchiha. As I preface in the intro, at the time of making this video, episode 20 of My Hero Academia has not come out yet, at least in English dub, in which that's how I'm watching My Hero Academia. In the last two episodes of My Hero Academia, some crazy stuff went down. This is way after the main battle against Shigaraki in the League of Villains, but it doesn't mean that things didn't occur. The main thing is that Deku leaves UA. With that, Hawks, Genius, and Endeavor learn about one for all, along class one day in Inko Midoriya, Izuku's mother. In episode 19, we see the scene that explains the reasoning that Deku is leaving UA. Since Shigaraki is after him, he will likely go after him once he recovers. Shigaraki has ragdoll search via all for one, so you can instantly find him and attack him. Deku wants to avoid others getting hurt, so he has to go off on his own so that Shigaraki can't hurt anyone else around him. I personally think that the decision is sound and rational. Some may say it would be better if he asked help from his friends, but what would happen to the civilians around them? What would stop Shigaraki from immediately killing Midoriya's friends or destroying Yue itself? Before I forget, let's go over the whole conversation within One for All, which takes up the majority of the 18th episode. So All Might and Hikagi Shinomori, the fourth wielder of One for All, are the ones who have wielded One for All the longest. Hikage never fought against All for One because he knew he wouldn't be strong enough to do so. Given that the first seven users had their own quirks in combination with One for All, I can see his reasoning. Deku is the first one to manifest other users' quirks, so that means Hikage only had One for All in his danger sense. Given that One for All was far weaker than when All Might inherited it, Hikage probably knew that One for All at the time wouldn't be strong enough to do anything. So he trained to make it stronger, but he died at the age of 40 due to old age. All Might used One for All for a total of 40 years, equal to Hikage's entire lifespan. Hikage used it for 18 years, meaning that he got it when he was 22 years old. The One for All originator, All for One's brother, Asked what's the difference between Hikage and All Might, and I thought it had to do with All Might fighting over him while Hikage didn't, but then Deku pointed out that All Might was quirkless. Basically, having a quirk can be equated to having a full glass of a liquid. Adding one for all to that glass would cause the glass to crack and eventually break. Someone who is quirkless has an empty glass and one for all would fill it without it breaking. So now that the other user's quirks are manifesting from one for all, there is no way that an ordinary person, and by ordinary I'm talking about someone born with a quirk, can use it. Only a quirkless person can inherit the power. Hence, it's possible that Deku will be the last wielder of one for all. If that's the case, he has to be the one to permanently take down the threat of all for one. This is crazy to think about because that means that both One for All and All for One can end forever and this could lead to permanent peace in Japan. In episode 19, we see Yoshindo, Tatami Nakagami, and a couple of others from Miss Joke's school Ketsubutsu Academy. Yo and Tatami run into muscular and things are looking bad. Fortunately, Deku shows up and makes quick work of muscular. The thing is that muscular's quirks start acting strange after Shindo used his Tremoring Earth, which is his ultimate move, on him. Muscular is now locked up, and we see that Deku has formed a team with All My Talks, Endeavor, and Genius. I did mention this before, but this is a pretty powerful team. We got the top three heroes, along with the only one for all wielder who can wield the quirks of all the previous wielders. They are going to take down the villains and end this chaos once and for all. But I can't wait to see more episodes. This has got me so hyped, especially seeing that Deku will be fighting against one of All For One's hired guns, Lady Nagant, who was locked up in Tartarus along with the other dangerous criminals. You guys will see this in a video on Wednesday, but I've recently strayed from just creating fully finished artworks and I've drawn on some colored sketches. These are very roughly colored sketches. I was going to make a video on my first random sketching session, but it ended up being 40 plus minutes and I wasn't able to export the video properly on my phone. Hence, I changed up the style in which I do these so that won't, that won't happen again. In comparison to my fully finished drawings that I do nowadays, I don't create a set of thumbnail images and try to pick out whichever ones I find to be the most interesting to draw. I simply get an idea, and once I know what character I'm drawing, which I'll clarify that the characters that I draw are randomly generated from a list that I created, I'll come from the idea in my head and execute. The majority of the people on the list are characters that have never done a full, fi fully finished artwork, so I usually need to go through anime in order to get the screenshots that I need. Once I have the reference, I put it into the project and I get to work. The majority of the time is spent making the sketch, and I spend usually no more than 15 minutes on the colors. 
The first sketch I did was a uh, Mirio sketch and that took a grand total of 49 minutes in that project. I shortened that to 41 minutes sketching Frost because at that point I got used to the workflow. Sketching multiple characters in a singular drawing is more of a challenge both in terms of figuring out a drawing for those characters and the added complexity of drawing multiple characters interacting. In this upcoming video however I drew three pairs that were randomly generated. Be sure to check Discord if you want to see who I got because by the time I release a video I will upload all those artworks to my art channel. In case anyone was wondering, this is not me that I'm done making fully finished drawings. I will continue to do so at my discretion. Maybe some of the sketches that I come up with will lead to a f final drawings. In fact, there's one that I'm heavily considering turning into a finished drawing. There are a couple of minor things I like to adjust with the drawing, but I may go through with it. Before that, however, I want to create at least three more sketches so that I have ten that I can look at and then decide if any of them will be continued. If I choose to continue any of these sketches, I'd have to do so from the... All I have to do from that point is line art, background, and coloring. Just be on the lookout for more. Let me preface this by saying that Tachi isn't my favorite member of the Uchiha clan. This title belongs to Sasuke Uchiha. I think at one point I had him listed in my top 10. Okay, so I checked my Twitter and it doesn't seem like I put him in my top 10 any time in which I've tweeted my top 10 Naruto characters, but I might announce a new top 10 characters before Boruto and discuss it further. Let's get into talking about Itachi. The reason I like his character is mainly due to the big reveal that we get after Itachi's death. Everything that we believed about him, him being this sinister, power-hungry, completely evil brother who was hell-bent on forcing Sasuke to live a life filled with hatred and the sole objective of killing him, ends up being the guy who actually saved the leaf village from his own clan and protected his little brother. All while keeping this persona of being the scum of all shinobi. But if that wasn't enough, then Itachi is reanimated and we get to learn more about his personality. Itachi has not only done all this dirty work, but he's changed dramatically as a character and he's grown. On the surface you may see this prodigy is just better than everyone else when it comes to both uh, ninjutsu and just general knowledge, including the Uchiha, but on the inside is this innocent child who views the world in such a realistic yet curious way. He understands how the shinobi world works and what he needs to do to ensure the safety of those around him. Things especially change when he first unlocks the Sharingan. As it's been stated, the Sharingan is awakened through emotional trauma. Sasuke awakened it after Itachi killed his clan. Itachi awakened it after Oito killed his squad. And Sarda apparently awakened it sometime before meeting Sasuke, but she activated it when meeting Sasuke, her father, for the first time. When he, re when he was reanimated, he shows a sense of further maturity and camaraderie. Given that type of stuff he had to do within the Hanbu, Itachi's sense of trust for others and relying on them to shoulder part of his burden wasn't something he could afford to do. He always acted on his own, even after joining Akatsuki, in order to assure the safety of the Hidden Leaf Village, and most of all, Sasuke. He told Donzo that he would leak intel to the neighboring villages if he laid his hands on Sasuke. That's dedication to family right there. After interacting with Naruto, Itachi realized that there are others he can count on to take care of his little brother, and it was his turn to tell Naruto that he doesn't have to do everything by himself. Itachi tried that, and he failed. He even says that if he told Sasuke everything about the Uchiha claim, he could have changed Fugaku, his father, and the entire clan. Who knows? That's what I love about Itachi, so much complexity within his life that you have to look back again and again to truly catch everything. Thank you guys for watching this video. Please be sure to subscribe. Turn on notifications, check out my Twitter and Discord, both are in the description. If you want to know what I'm currently doing or thinking about, those two places are the best places to go. I will see you guys next time.